Here we continue our review of problems that may be on the final. In this problem, we're looking to find the equation of a line through two points. Think in your mind where those two points are. Grab a piece of paper and quickly sketch them. Here I've used GeoGebra to plot the point 2, 6. I asked GeoGebra to plot the point minus 2, 6, but I'm going to need to slide that over a little bit so we can see it. So there's our two points. Let's also view uh, the grid for this so we can see that we're going up 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. We're actually going up 4 and over 8, but that's the same as a, as a slope of, of uh, 1 half. In the graph, we can also see that once this line is completed, that the y-intercept is between 4 and 6. Zooming out a little bit so that we get a better grid pattern, we can see that it's actually exactly halfway between 4 and 6. So we can see in the graph that the y-intercept is at 5. So at this point, we know the equation of the line is y is equal to 1 half, for the rise over the run, x plus 5. We've solved this problem graphically, but now let's look at solving the problem algebraically. First, find the slope. Remember the equation for the slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, where x2, y2 is the ending point, and x1, y1 is the beginning point. In our case, we're going to think of 2, 6 as the ending point and the minus 6, 2 as the beginning point. So 6, 2 is the ending point, minus 6, 2 is the beginning point. So that means that the rise will be counted by the ending point, 6, minus the 2, and the run will be counted by 2, thinking of this as the ending point, minus a minus 6. That means the slope is equal to 6 minus 2 over 2 plus 6. So the slope is 4 over 8, which reduces to 1 half. We know the equation looks like y is equal to mx plus b, so since we now know the slope, it's got to be y is equal to 1 half x plus b. We still need to find out what b is. But we know two points that must satisfy the equation. Pick either one of them, say 2, 6. Then our equation, y is equal to 1 half x plus b, when I put a 6 in for the y and a 2 in for the x, then I have an equation that's just missing what b is, and we'll be able to solve for that. The equation simplifies to be 6 is equal to 1 plus b. Subtracting a 1 from both sides of the equation, we discover that b is equal to 5. Now put the facts together. We know that y is equal to 1 half x. We had discovered that earlier when we found what the slope was. And then we found out that the b value had to be 5, so the equation is y is equal to 1 half x plus 5. In this next problem, we are again looking to find the equation of a line. In this case, we need to find a line that's perpendicular to a given line and goes through a point. You should be able to graph the line and the point very easily by hand. Here I've asked GeoGebra to graph the line. And here we've also plotted the point. So you can see that we're going to be looking for a line that, that's perpendicular to this given line. So our line will have to go like this. Okay, we can see that the slope of this line is 1. So if this other one's going to be perpendicular, its slope will have to be a minus 1. And now we know a point that it goes through, so we'll be able to use a number of different methods to solve that uh, for the equation. Now let's do those same calculations algebraically instead of geometrically. The slope of y is equal to x plus 5 is 1. So, so the slope of any perpendicular line is the negative reciprocal of that slope. In this case, that will be a negative 1. Now just to clarify, if the slope had have been 1 half, 
then the slopes of perpendicular lines would have been a negative 2. Or if the slope had have been 2 thirds, the slope of perpendicular lines would have been a negative 3 halves. Now notice what we know. We know the slope of the line we're looking for is a negative 1, and we know it goes to the point negative 2, 5. We could use y is equal to mx plus b to find the equation of our line, or we could use the point-slope form of the line. The point-slope form of the line is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. I need another parenthesis there. Where x1, y1 is a known point on the line and m is the slope of the line. Let's substitute our known information into the equation. We get y minus 5 because 5 is the y value of the known point is equal to minus 1 because the perpendicular line will have a slope of a minus 1 uh, times x minus a minus 2. That cleans up to be y minus 5 is equal to a negative 1 times x plus 2, which is y minus 5 is equal to a negative x minus 2, and now we will add 5 to both sides of the equation. So the equation of our line is y is equal to a negative x plus 3. The next two problems were asked to graph an equation. I'm a little clumsy drawing with my mouse. You should be able to do better with the paper and pencil. But here I've labeled my axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. Looking at the equation, I know that one of the points in the equation is if x is 0, y is a negative 2. I found that point by simply plugging 0 in everywhere there was an x and discovering that the equation tells me y would be a negative 2. So I've recorded the point in my t-table and also plotted the point on my graph. Notice that I'm labeling the size of my tick marks on the graph. In this equation, the second thing that I know is that the slope is 1. So each time I go up 2, I'd have to go over 2. Counting up 2 and over 2 from the known point gives me the point 2, 0. I've recorded that, I've plotted that point, and I've also shown that point in the t-table. Of course, if I went up 1, I would also go over 1. Starting from the known point, that would put me at a ne uh, shoot, hang on. Counting up 1 and over 1 from the starting point would put me at an x value of 1 and a y value of a negative 1. Notice that you, if you went up 3, you'd need to go over 3. So counting from the starting point up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, would give me this point, which is going to be 3, 1. The points are clearly lining up in a line. Okay, my graph is clumsy, but there's the graph of y is equal to x minus 2. The second graph is not in the slope-intercept form, it's in general form. Again, be patient as I try and draw this with my mouse. Here I've labeled the x and the y axis. Again, we recognize the form of this line as being in general form for a straight line, so we know the graph is going to be a straight line. We'll start a t-table to get some values. Getting two points will be enough to be able to graph the equation, but it will be helpful to get more than two. Choosing x to be 0 would make minus 15 times 0 would be 0, uh, plus 3x is equal to a minus 3 would give us the equation, th uh, 3y is equal to a minus 3. We can solve the equation, 3y is equal to a minus 3 by dividing both sides by 3 and finding that y is equal to a minus 1. So when x is 0, y is going to be a minus 1. We now plot that point. Again, notice that we're careful to label on the axes where the tick marks are so that we know how big 1 is, for example. It's usually helpful to also plot some of the given points, some of the points that we're finding. 
Another point that's often easy to find is to pick the y value to be 0. If y is 0, we've got a negative 15x is equal to a negative 3. x is going to be equal to a positive 1 fifth. That point's a little bit harder to plot, but let's try it. Here I've identified where 1 is on the x-axis. Now I'd need to divide that up into 5 equal pieces and I'd have 1 fifth which would be somewhere around in there. It's, I'm not sure that I'm going to be too accurate with plotting that one-fifth. I'd like to find some other nice points. We could find lots and lots of points and many of them will have fractions involved. But if I choose y to be 4, then I'd have 3 times 4 would be a 12. Subtract that from both sides. That would give me a negative 15 on the right-hand side. And so x would have to be equal to 1. Of course, the point in any graphing problem is to find enough points so you can really identify fairly accurately where the graph is. You'll notice with the three points that we've got that they look reasonably in a straight line. That's kind of reassuring that we're getting the right answer. So there's my rough attempt at, at uh, drawing the line for minus 15x plus 3y is equal to a negative 3. More to come in the next video.